Hey YouTube, it's Mr. White Gloves, it's Splash Page Comics. Welcome to another video of my wall being cleared off. Of course you see this just about every week I try to clear off my wall and let you, the viewers, see what I bought. Today we're going to go through all the books I clear off and I'm going to have something that I haven't had ever in my lifetime of making YouTube videos. I'm going to have a rant. At the very end, so spe pay special close attention to the rant, and it's a totally lifetime changing event for Mr. White Gloves. So stay tuned and find out. We're going to start the video off with Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan, number seven. I'll, I'll continue to say it. Awesome book, awesome book. You need to read this book. I'll just keep saying it. You need to read this book. Good book. Also, I picked up some uh, some John Size Wolverine Old Man Logan, number one. I haven't read this book yet. Let's see if I can see it here. I haven't read this book yet, but the cover art on it is awesome so far. It's got me real intrigued, and I didn't know that they made a John Size Wolverine Old Man Logan, and I found this and I picked it up, and I can't wait to read this book. Again, excuse my chair. I need a little Earl on it. But uh, Wolverine Old Man Logan number... Do, 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 where's the number? 69. I haven't read this book yet either, but I will be cook, uh, cut, uh, popping it open with my white gloves, of course. And I will be putting this in my comic cradle, and I will be reading this book. Again, awesome art on this cover. Awesome art. Just, oh, Wow. Then we have uh, Wolverine, Old Man Logan, number 71. Check him out with all the bullet holes in his head. Wow. Pa 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 pa. They blew the hell out of him, didn't they? You know, that is an awesome cover. And I imagine after shooting him that many times, if he was the person pulling the trigger, uh, you better be gone. You better be out of there. You better be like uh, uh, the Road Runner. Beep beep because he's coming after your ass because that just pissed him off okay we're going to get into the uh, amazing spider-man number 13 versus the invincible iron man pretty awesome cover pretty awesome cover i'll have to read this book i'm behind on my reading because i've been doing videos yard work uh, football games it's just been uh wild and crazy wild and crazy so, then I've covered this book, so I'm just going to show it again. I ended up buying it twice. Don't know why. I forgot I had it. I'm getting old. Uh, Alzheimer's. I'm not making fun of people that have the disease or anything. But, Adventure's 10. All right, moving on. And eventual, uh, Invincible Iron Man, number 10, also. I haven't read this book yet, but I will be reading it this weekend. And hopefully it'll be a cool read, because I paid like... Uh, Three nine nine four. So, one of my characters I really uh, love, and uh, it's uh, all new story. Blind Man's Bluff starts now, and I'm glad they uh, did this. You know, since they've already done a reboot and they started Daredevil over, I figured they would probably with this book probably start over at number one again, since it's an all new story. You know, and that seems to be what Marvel is uh, uh, likes to do. Start the whole book over number one because they think everybody wants number ones and everything. Me, I'm more into the content of the book and I wish it, it'd go back to the original uh, numbers and stay that way. Volume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm confused! I am a person that's addicted to the runs of books. And when you start throwing these volumes in there, all it does is confuse me. But we'll get to that later. X-Men 92, You Lose, number four. I haven't read this book yet. I uh, picked it up because I have been reading this book, and I like the old uh, 90s X-Men, and it's been pretty good thus far, but let's see what happens here. Thunderbolts, number, well, let's go to this. I got this a couple of weeks ago. Thunderbolts, doo -doo 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 -doo. number one. I might have talked about this on a video. I picked this up just to check it out. I read this, and it's a pretty good read, and I was real curious about where the story was going to go, so I picked up number two. Number two. 
So we'll figure out if that's going to be a keeper or not. Yeah, here's here's the other number 10. So I may have got three copies. Oh man, I swear. Civil War tie-ins. Civil War tie-ins. Invincible Iron Man number two has a Civil War tie-in. And whether it be mainstream tie-in or just something that they mention the word Civil War 2 or kidnapping or something's going to happen. You know, it could be one or two panels. And I've noticed in these books and it's a tie-in. Huh. You know, so you might already start flipping the pages off in, uh, around in the comic shop and looking at it and see if it's a true Civil War tie-in. True Civil War tie-in. And this evidently is uh, huh, another copy, this different cover. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazing Spider-Man number one, Civil War two. So we're going to get into uh, this and uh, see if it's a true tie-in or not. Man, this chair sounds horrible. Civil War II, Captain America vs. Spider-Man, number one. This one, pushing that Civil War II, pushing the Civil War II. You know, it's just driving me nuts. Uh, Road to Civil War II, this is a, uh, a little earlier edition. It's all new Wolverine. Right here. So it's kind of a getting to the Civil War, which we're already in now. Alright. Civil War Zero. It's the sketch cover that you get all the drawings and the sketch and you put them together and, you know, it forms this cool looking poster that costs entirely too much that you could probably wait a year and get a big poster of it, of all the books together and save yourself. 30 bucks, you know. But anyway, ended up getting it. Civil War Zero. Right here. When it's starting off, variant cover on this. And then we have Spider Man number one, Civil War two, a variant cover on that one also. Okay, now we're getting into a, a little topic I wanted to talk, talk about, the, my little rant on variant covers. For collecting comics as many years as I have, as I have I've seen all the gimmicks and everything that Marvel's tried to do to sell more books. And it gets to where at a point in time that it's underhanded. You know, I know there's a market out there for variant books, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the average collector that's trying to buy these books can't afford these books to get these variants. It seems like when you make multiple, multiple copies of a single book that the inside is the exact same and you put different cover art on the outside just to sell that book, in my eyes, is just going a little bit too far. In the 90s, we went through the chromium covers, the multiple chromium covers, the, 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 the poster covers, the holograph covers, you know, and all this stuff. And these books were getting uh, bought up like crazy. You know, Marvel sat there and looked, oh, these books are popular, you know. The, the, the public's going wild. They're looking at the numbers. Yes, they're looking at the numbers. But you got people that are buying four, five, six, eight copies of the same book. It's not four, five, six different new people. It's four, it's one person getting all, all those books, which, you know, Marvel in their sense, hey, we're selling books, we're getting all this new business, and little did they know they overflooded the uh, market, and guess what happened? Boom! It collapsed. And it had a lot to do with uh, uh, DC also. Yeah, Superman, really. Killed him, then brought him back. Black cover, white cover. You know, but I have a feeling that these variants are fixing to start doing this. I, I enjoy the art on the variants. I, you know, I'm not going to say I don't buy the variants. I do buy the variants, but <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> but I'm fixing to show you a run of Civil War II number ones and all the variant covers. I bought this on purpose just to show you, the viewer, how many variants. And this is probably not all. This is all I, I, I could find or I ran across. How many variants of this one book are out there? So according to Marvel, all these variants that I bought, there's that many people that bought that. No, there's just me that bought this many. 
So you can count all the stack of variants I got as one person. And if that one person gets pissed off, and he sits there and tells another, then they tell two, then they tell four, then they tell eight, you know, we can stop this crap. I mean, I am, I, I, I'm tired of it, and it, it's over for me. It is over with the Civil War II variant, number ones, will be the last variant cover of any title I buy. I'm making a stand, I'm putting my foot down, and I will take that money, and I will do like I did back in the 90s. I will go back and start buying Silver and Bronze Age issue comics. It's a better investment in the long run for the person than sitting there buying these variants and spending all this money when this book next week could be less than cover price, if you pay attention to the prices of the books. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. My Silver Age books that I'm going to buy, I'm going to be able to come up with some great Silver Age books. And I, lo I, I love the books. I love the texture on the inside of the books. I love the way the characters were portrayed. And I love the art on the front sold the book. You know, you didn't have this spectacular artist on the front. Then you open the cover and the art inside sucked. Really? The art on front now, some of these variants is trying to sell some of the art inside of these books. And there's some of these art inside of the books that are pretty good, but the artist on the outside is spectacular, you know. Draw it in, eye candy, oh my god, I gotta have it. It's a variant, it's a 1 in 10, it's a 1 in 20, it's a 1 in 25, it's a 1 in 100, it's a 1 in 50, it's a 1 in 1,000. My god, when are they going to stop? When are they going to stop? People are spending all this damn money on these books, and they're thinking these variants are going to be worth something in 10, 15 years. True, maybe the 1 in 1,000 or 1 in 10,000 variant, variant will be, but the average people out there can't afford or can't get their hands on those copies anyway. And if they go to eBay, they can bid on those books. But that's not a guarantee that those books will be worth something in the future. So... My white guy gloves are up. I surrender. I will no longer, like I said, buy a variant book. I will buy newsstand copies only. And there's nothing wrong if you do. This is my opinion. This is what I'm going to be doing. I've been collecting for over 40 years. And I've been through this before. And I'm fed up with it once again. Once again. My money will go where it counts. Silver and Bronze Age books and you will start seeing some spectacular books that I pick up and I will still have I've shrunk my pull list down from about 40 books down to 15 a month so I am cutting all this back and I'm focusing on uh, on the earlier issues which in 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 my eyes are a lot better read and and, and just a, it was amazing time in Marvel history amazing time Amazing. Now, yeah, I may pay a little bit more for these books now, but you know, that's all right. That's perfectly fine. My investment is going to be sound. It's going to be true. And it's going to be something that I love. And I'm not going to let Marvel dictate to me and put me under pressure to buy all those variant books thinking that I'm going to be a millionaire overnight. It will not happen. It will not happen. Excuse me. <laughs> Got a little carried away there, didn't I? But, so let's just start going over to the uh, Civil War number two variants. Civil War number two. This is number one. We got the Hulk, Gods of War variant. Civil War number two, number one. Hastings variant. Civil War number two, number one, Y cover variant. Civil War number two, number one, Ultra Heroes Special Breakdown. Civil War number two, number one. Another variant? Does that say variant? Yes, it does. Variant. 
Civil War number two, number one, uh, Iron Man. This is the the newsstand edition. Civil War number two, number one variant. Gwenpool color edition. Civil War number two, number one. Huh. Gwenpool. Same cover. Black and white edition. Really? Really? They actually save money on this book by not running it through a color printer. Huh. Civil War number two, number one. She Hulk variant. Civil War number two, number one. <laughs> Hot Will variant. Civil War number two, number one. Sketch cover poster variant. Goes along with the zero. Civil War number two, number one. Hercules variant. Are you getting my drift? Are, are, are you seeing what they're doing? Are you seeing the trap that they've laid and we walked right into it? Me being in comics for over 40 years, I fell into this trap. And you know, I, I the same trap, like I said earlier, I fell into in the 90s and I walked out of it and I turned my back on certain issues back in the 90s. And I do not regret that. If I want to go back and get those 90s book, books now, I would pay less than cover price for a lot of them books, buying them in bulk. So yet, I've saved tubs of money by going back later and getting these books. These variants are going to be the same way, guys. They're going to be the exact same way. You're going to you, these variants are ranging from three ninety nine to four ninety nine. In ten years, you're going to be able to pick them up in the dollar bin, and you're going to be able to take that money that you've saved if you stop now, and you can be, uh, spend it on some books that you will treasure the rest of your life. Believe me, I've got some books back in the silver silver age books that I treasure, and I will treasure the rest of my life. And by pulling back in the 90s and buying Silver Age books, I, that was the best thing I could have ever done. The best thing I could have ever done. And as far as the movies, the movies are driving the market of the comics. Whether you like it or not, they're bringing in investors and, and flippers and, and all, all sorts of big speculators. And e they're driving up the prices on eBay, which, you know, the, uh, the local comic shops are sitting there seeing eBay prices, raising the price of their book the day after they come out or the day of they come out. You know, you know, it, it's not enough. We have to put up with, with, uh, uh, Marvel charging high prices. Uh, prices to print these books. Then we have to turn around and uh, e estimators estimate a book and start selling them on eBay and they jack them up even more. Really? Pieces of paper with art on them shouldn't cost that much when they first come out. They've really never proved themselves yet. They've never standed the test of time. They've never went through uh, the trials and tribulations of what the public really like on a first whim of a week or two. You know, really stop and think about it you know the Mona Lisa wasn't popular until hundreds of years after it was painted well how long do you think that that painting sat over there in the corner and everybody walked in and looked at it and said man she's kinda ugly you know for years it sat there until it was finally discovered or what happened to it and it became priceless people are treating these books that they coming off the shelf as priceless artifacts when they're when there are their artworks that, like I said, haven't been proven. They haven't stand the test of time, and you know a little more than I appeal. So, guys, let's let's team up together. What do you want to or not? That's all up to you. We can stop this. We are the people putting forth our money that pays Marvel for these books or DC, however you want to look at. It. I'm mainly talking about Marvel because I am a Marvel collector. So. 
with that, I'll move on and I will show you the uh, book that I picked up at my local comic shop. Thank you, Rob, at Monster Layers Comics. Uh, we did some wheeling and dealing on this, and it's a very popular book, and I imagine you're all going to be excited. And this is a new beginning for Tex, a lot more Silver Age comics, other than uh, one Silver Age comic a week. It may be more, you know. It may uh, may turn into a Silver Age show, you know, to kind of go with my silver hair I got up here. Yeah, got a lot, lot more now than I used to. Right here. X-Men number three. Beautiful book. Beautiful book. Beautiful book. This will go in with uh, my X-Men two, uh, one and two. So I got three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth. So I'm going to uh, concentrate on my X-Men. I'm going to concentrate on some other uh, uh, Silver Age books and start filling the holes in them. And not worrying about this new stuff that comes out, other than uh, some stuff that I like to read. So, this wall behind me may shrink. It may get smaller. <clears throat> and you may you may not, uh, these uh, Friday reviews may not be as spectacular as they used to be. But I'm going to be showing quality books. Quality books. What made Marvel, you know, what, what it is, you know. Books like this. Books like this that really laid the foundation for Marvel's, Marvel's path to success, you know, before the downfall of the 90s, and I think the downfall of the uh, probably 2000s. So, with that, I got one other thing to say. I'm calling out Buckshot 33. Dude, I'm calling you out. Yes, sir. A lot of people think are thinking right now, oh, Mr. White Gloves is pissed off at Buckshot 33. Well, I tell you what, Buckshot 33, I'm calling you right out on this video right now. I challenge, I challenge you to do your next unboxing or comic haul video in your wife's wedding veil. Yes, I said it. In your wife's wedding veil. I challenge you to do that. So I will be watching, and I hope everyone else out there is watching, and watch Buckshot 33's videos to see if you can catch him in his wife's wedding veil doing an unboxing or a comic haul or something. It's going to be funny as hell. Like I said, I challenge you. Let's see if you're man enough to take me up on the challenge. And with that, this is Tex, Mr. White Gloves. Saying, we out of here.